Hi, I'm Cass and this is Honey. And we're regular Canadians enjoying weed and we're here with the Nomad Cook, Travis! A repeat guest! Yep. Welcome <laughs> to Beaver 2. In the Beaver 2! Now you're in the Beaver Den! What are your thoughts on the Beaver Den? I do not think you could fit three people in the Beaver Den, but uh, you, you could can. probably fit another three in here. You need to be surprised right. where a beaver can fit. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the nomad cook here. We gave him a bung lighter just to be funny. <laughs> Tricked him. I'm just teasing you, building the suspense. We're having a sneaky little wake and bake here on a Saturday morning. Before my brother gets married. <laughs> Before his brother gets married. Sorry, brother. Now I've built my brand as a traveling chef, so I have an opportunity to meet all these people in different areas. And what I just thought was like, let's introduce everyone. Let's get everyone start working together and collaborating. I'm so that's, happy. That's why we've launched the history. Culinary Cannabis Association. So we're out there. We're the first governing body to certify chefs and cooks in the country. So we've done Toronto and Vancouver now. Uh, we're in Hamilton in two weeks. Uh -huh. well, we're going to hit every province. We want to get at least 200 people together, take that data, and then we're going to sit down with Health okay. Canada, Restaurants Canada, and kind of show, listen, this is, this is what we're doing right now. Right now, if we all start operating on that same level, mm -hmm. right, we're all using the same techniques, terminologies, we're all acting on the same safety procedures. We're only going to force Health Canada and the perception of okay, look, they're taking this serious. They're mm -hmm. acting to a code of conduct, mm -hmm. and it's straight across the board. You're like right? a union of culinary. That's just it. And yeah. even it was never my intention to be a pioneer <laughs> and industry leader. You know, I was just looking to make some money, to be honest. <laughs> But I also oh. think that you have like an actual gift with people and everybody we've met that has come to your dinners loves you and like, you know, it, that you can't, like that is something else. That's something that makes you successful because you're relatable and it's different than, you know, just being a good chef. You also have all of the other things that make you approachable. And, and that's what I realized is that, you know, it's not just, it's like some people th want to come just to get stoned. Right? Some people are coming to support partner or whatever, but they come there and then they're like, holy shit, this was a great experience. Mm -hmm. From the second I walked into the door, I sat down at a table, this guy across from me, I would never talk to him in a million years, but we're sitting here, I'm a little stoned, he said something funny, all of a sudden this conversation started going mm -hmm. and, hey, you know what, I actually like this person. Right? Let's change phone numbers. And I've seen that, ha and that's what hooked me originally. Yeah. You know, those first couple dinners, the first time you guys came. You know, when we sat you at that table, you guys were on the inside, right? <laughs> that was a riot. Right? <laughs> it was. It was a total riot. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> it just, was. You just get the most, like, it was a random individual people. <laughs> it was a random table of people. And that's yes. exactly, but it's exactly what you described. Yeah. Like, that is so cannabis. Everything that you're talking about there. Like, it bring, it does bring people together, yeah. this plant, you know? Yeah. It makes people relax. It makes people want to work together and collaborate on things. And so at these dinners, strangers get to enjoy this beautiful food, let down their guard and interact, but also like in your training program, it's that same thing. I think that people in other competitive, you know, old school industries are confused when they see the cannabis industry because we are nice to each other. We want to build this together. We want to make it like successful quickly. And like, because it's so new, there's enough for everyone. Yeah, you know, it's, it's very restrictive right now. I can't, you know, I'm still stuck half in the gray and, and mm -hmm. half illegally, but... Um, Have you had any sort of flash over your no, uh, legal I, issues the at only, all? The only time was the Victoria dinner, right? When I did that interview with CTV <laughs> and... They Victoria's to, like, no fun allowed for you. <laughs> Victoria, yeah, exactly. the only place that ever shut me down, right? Victoria, they scared the shit yeah. out of me right. when they called me. <laughs> oh, right? oh, it's oh, like yeah. the police showing up here. I was no, like, she ah. me. She, and then she's like, I, she's like, I see you have other dinners in Cologne and Vancouver. I'm just gonna let them know you're coming. And it was so funny because oh, I, was, oh, I took all my stuff oh, down. Cool. This was before the very first Infused Dine series. So I took everything down. And then Friday at four o'clock. So we're starting at 4.30 that day for our first dinner. Friday, four o'clock. Vancouver Health Authority sends me an email. It's like, uh, we were alerted by Victoria Island Health. That oh. You may be having a cannabis dinner. He's like, where is it? And I'm like, that dude sent this email <laughs> at four. <laughs> I'm like, that dude Can sent this email at Friday, four yes. o'clock because he doesn't want to deal with it. So he sends it at the very end of the day on Friday. And he's like, well, I tried to do something I, I about it. I sent an email. Right? Well, <laughs> and, I, 
I was like, dinner's in like 10 minutes. I see it. I'm like, I'm not going to respond to that yeah. until yeah. Monday and be like, sorry, the event's over. <laughs> and everybody <laughs> lives. Yeah. But the well. funny thing, when they shut Victoria down, right, and you guys got the call from me and I was like, hi, just, you know, unfortunately, we have to cancel the event, but I'm going to come back in two weeks if you still want to come. And you guys like, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we, we definitely want to come. Canceling and making it underground secret event Ex instead. Ex exactly. Except, didn't you guys come up with like a can of mace or something to the door? Or like oh, no, no. Weapon, we got right? dropped off and we we're like, where this, are we? <laughs> garden esque no, like door. Secret, and you're yeah. like, well, I don't think I want to go knock on the door. <laughs> I heard Fairfield. I was like, oh, it's probably one of those big fancy houses in Fairfield. And then we get there and I was like, no. And like all the curtains were shut. And I I was like, we're going in here to die. <laughs> but then, like a magic uh, appearance of my relish. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's true. Yes. It was just like the first thought was unease, but then exactly. The sausage dog changed the whole vibe immediately. When that comes trotting out, you're yes. like, okay, whoa. Land I misread the situation clearly. A sausage dog couldn't yeah. be a present at a murder. Coming up with 19 months, but um, I'm about. 2,640 something people now have served their first infused dinner. So the number the is. first one. Their first That's one. The, okay, right? yeah. Um, cool. Including know. our grandmother yes. who got her first infused And she yeah. very yeah. much enjoyed um, it. I'm about 31 to 32 percent of those people were new to cannabis too, mm -hmm. right? Trying cannabis for the first time or trying it for the first time in a while because they had that bad brownie experience. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's 58% female coming out to my events. Right? There were a lot of stigmas. I assumed young 20 year old males who smoked a lot of pot. That was my clientele, I thought, mm -hmm. when I first started doing this. And I was so wrong. But that just goes to show that programming that was in my brain, right? Because this is what mm -hmm. stigmas do. And it's taking people like yourselves and everyone else that, um, you know, just keeps using their voice and, um, being happy and friendly and supportive and yeah. I have a client he's been f five times now um and he's like you know I me and my wife never like we're not very social people and this is our like social outlet this is where we come That's to like so talk people wonderful about, right and it, like it's just moments like that where I'm like okay yeah, let's just keep going like this is yeah. something right Exactly. How many other uh, you know dinners do you go to where you m talk to strangers? You know, meet other people, you sit at a table here's, with others. Like that's such a here's a great story on thing. that. I went to this restaurant called Fig. Uh, I was I was looking through you know best reviews and that, and I phoned the place and like you can't get a reservation for months in this place. But she's like, we, <laughs> she's like, but we you can come down. We have a community table. So this community table is a big circle table. It seats eight people. Mm -hmm. I sat on this table. There was a couple from. Boston, a couple from Colorado, a couple from Atlanta, and then this young country singer who was on <laughs> tour around. He's from yes. he's from Texas, what? living in San Diego, driving around America, performing at little bars. His oh name was God. Nick Crook. Okay. Nick Crook. Nick I'm Crook, looking that guy right? up. What? Yes, you have to. Right? And so <laughs> we I sit down, and it was the first time that I experienced what people experience when they come to my dinners. Because I sat down by myself. Mm -hmm at a table full of strangers, and instantly everyone was talking to the point when, like, Nick Crook was like, do you want a bite of my gnocchi? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, the, the, yes. I, I, love, I love how to eat like that. And I'm like, are you, and I'm, he's like, yeah. And I'm like, do you want some of mine? He's like, yeah. And like, the whole, like, we're all yes. sharing. That's how I love to eat. And yeah. then, you know, like, we're going around the table, and everyone's like, what do you do? What do you do? And it comes to me, and I'm like, I'm a cannabis chef. And everyone's like, huh? Uh, right? Yay! And so then I start telling them, I'm so proud to go down the States and tell people what yes. I do. And so that's just so funny. And then I, I share with the table, I'm like, you know what? I'm like, this is the first time I've experienced what people experience that come to my dinners. The only difference is we're not all stoned here. And the one lady from Boston's like, I am. Everyone <laughs> <laughs> yeah. starts yeah. at the table. And I, the, food, the food was great, but the, this, is, this is where it wraps it up and kind of leads back to your saying. It's like, the food was great. But the experience and the connections with everyone else made that one of the most memorable dining experiences I've ever had in my life. What we want to know is, will there be a Christmas party this year? 100% there will be a Christmas party. <laughs> will Castle Honey uh, be invited? <laughs> so what I, I what I got coming up here is um, I have moved back home to Vancouver, but I will be out east. Uh, I'm going to Montreal for the first time, which I'm really excited for. So September is all out east. 
Um, October, I'm going to San Francisco on the 14th. Uh, yeah, really pumped for that. But uh, we have the one year anniversary, so um, we're doing something big. One year anniversary. Right? October is 7th. A big yeah, deal. October 17th will be a big dinner, and it will be very special. Um, it may involve some other chefs as well, um, but special. we're putting that all together. And you know, I had to, I had to be back here for October seventeenth. West Coast is, you know, awesome. I'm a West Coast boy, and yeah. that. But uh, and then uh, yes, we're, the we're BC bud you grew up on yeah. on the day of it. Yes. You know, yeah. yeah. So, what, yeah. what would it would it be like? It's debutante, maybe it's cotillion, <laughs> like, <laughs> something big. It's coming yeah. of age, you know. Yeah. Uh, you've been out there in the world a year. Yeah. Oh, that's so exciting! Yeah. So the, the cannabis oh, legalization. So many years. great things coming up. It's funny. Go back and watch on Netflix the Ken Burns Prohibition series, oh. right? And you will watch, and you're just like, how ludicrous was the reasoning to make alcohol legal and stuff, and. What is the generation 25, 30 years from now going back and look at this? Um, you know, if the whole planet isn't destroyed by then. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's the know. thing. That's the catch. If they're not, if they're not <laughs> criticizing us for We're destroying stuck. the planet, then they're going to be making yeah. fun of us on how we dealt with legalization. But you know what? Definitely. We still are or the country that legalized it. We're the ones figuring right. it out. So have faith. Or everyone could find hemp and we could save the planet, right? right? For the aliens who find the surviving tape, the only remnant of Earth. <laughs> Sorry, we fucked up the planet. Want to say Enjoy exactly. it. <laughs> yeah. This is what they find. <laughs> Cass and honey. <Yeah. laughs> I hope they find the this. I really want to say is enjoy the world weed is and be over. <laughs> Nothing is left. <laughs> Aliens finally get here. They find this little tape. Right? What would they like <laughs> deduce of humanity? You know, they'd, they'd be, be like, like what is going this? on in here? <laughs> they base the entire What's human civilization off this one yeah. tape, right? Well, what lucky you for you guys. Are you happy You're going to think civilization right. is awesome. Are you happy for us to be your ambassador? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, Earthlings. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Beaver 2. Uh, I, feel, I feel like the dinner's going to be really good tonight after being in the Beaver Den. Right? I don't have to cook. I'm nice and lit up right now. Hey. So. Hey. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming and yeah. being a repeat guest. Yes, thanks for having me. And Keep doing what you do, girls. Oh, can't wait for the invitation well. to the October next 17th party. October 17th, hey, the there. Christmas party. We'll see you there. Oh. You yeah. cannot wait. Let's do it. Let's do it. Thanks so much. And yeah. thanks, Canada, for watching. Remember to enjoy responsibly. And don't drive high, but definitely go to weddings high. Mm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And serve weed at your weddings so that we're happy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, go find Nick Crook, Nick Crook on Instagram. I will. And shoot him a message. Ask for a bite of his yes. Nokia. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely want a bite. <laughs> <laughs> this was a great thing. This is how he was so, he was like,